I've spent the majority of my life working in the outdoors as a soldier, outdoorsman, and guide. Many years ago, I came to a crossroad in my military career. I felt like I was at the point where I was no longer able to learn about survival from the military. So I searched and I watched as many new shows popped up like Dual Survival, Survivor Man, and others. Shows that partnered seasoned soldiers with primitive living instructors. I watched experienced soldiers who had amazing skills with tools fall short without them. And I had to look deep within myself and ask why. So realizing that something was missing in my training, I then formulated a plan. I set out to find people with these skills in my area to find out who they were, where they come from, who taught them, and more importantly, how could I learn and master these skills for myself. This journey has led me to a place where I have had the privilege of teaching these things that I love to others, skills that now range from advanced navigation to primitive fire. This is my journey to primitive. This is my story, yet it's a story that has never really been about me. And I became senior skills instructor and senior instructor for outdoor survival skill school boulder outdoor survival skill school for so david was one of those guys and so he was doing stuff that i had never seen before and and so we brought him in to be one of our lead instructors at boss when i owned boss and uh it's just been kind of one of those things ever since we've traveled all over together we've done programs together we've worked on different projects together and we've just been very good friends ever since and i saw in the back of this this magazine there was an ad for it said boulder outdoor survival school had this arrow going through it and I was like, wow, there's, there's actually people doing this stuff. You know, it said primitive stone age technologies. So naturally, of course, I wanted to know who are the people at the Boulder Outdoor Survival School and what are they all about? A few years ago, I was lucky enough to go with the Lady HQ and film with the Boulder Outdoor Survival School. But what is the Boulder Outdoor Survival School today? My name is Randy Champagne. Um, I am a, uh, a wilderness survival instructor. I work here at the Boulder Outdoor Survival School in beautiful Boulder, Utah. Uh, I've been here uh, since 2009 working as an instructor and I took my student course in 2008. Um, so I guess what is that? I've been instructing here now for eight years. Um, originally I came to Boss to kind of learn primitive survival skills. I had uh, learned uh, as much as I possibly could from books and from going out and trying it on my own. And, uh, and I, I took a course through Tom Brown Jr. in New Jersey, uh, which was you know a really fantastic uh, course and a great door opener for me, but it, I wanted something that was a little bit more experiential. Um, and so I came out and I, I did my uh, student course in 2008. Um, and yeah, I've been here ever since. Um, originally, I took my course just to uh, to continue to further my evolution of learning primitive skills and, and learn to be live a little bit closer with the land. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I w at this time, I, I was just finishing up school. I went to school at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was finishing up school and I, uh, I needed to find a job. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, her father owned a, a software company. And when I started working at the software company, it, um, it was pretty small. There was just a couple of people that were, that were there. Uh, and then um, very quickly the, the company grew. My position in this company was like a, basically just doing sales. Uh, and which I didn't particularly like, but like I said, I needed a job and this was a good opportunity for me. So anyways, um, the company grew and as the company grew, uh, my responsibility in the company grew as well. So I was, you know, 19, 20 years old and I was working at this, this software company, uh, working ridiculous hours under like a pretty high stress, in, in a high stress environment. And so, um, so going out in, in nature uh, for me was a bit of an escape and a way for me to, to reconnect myself with myself and the world that, that we all exist in. Um, 
I knew that I didn't want to do this, do that, do that job forever. And uh, and I started, uh, you know, kind of at a young age. I knew I felt connected to the natural world. I knew that I wanted to be outside as much as I possibly can. And the further that I got from from that existence, the further away that I felt from myself. Uh, and so, um, so I, I ended up, you know, leaving that job and jumped two feet into this the primitive skills or bushcraft world, whatever you want to call it. And I had no clue what I was doing. Um, a lot of it was going out and practicing, was learning um, what was in my area uh, for for plants and for trees to use for things like friction fire. And so it's going out and practicing and getting that dirt time in. Um, and then that evolved into, well, I've gone pretty far in learning as much as I can from these books, but now I want to try to to go a little bit deeper into this world. So, like I said, at that point I had taken a course through Tom Brown Jr. at the Tractor School, uh, and you know Tom's an amazing teacher. Uh, but it's it's a very it's very classroom based. It's a big group of people that are sitting down, looking at a you know looking at a teacher, and that teacher is sort of in, um, sort of relaying information to you. And it's not as experiential as I wanted to wanted it to be. So from there, uh, in 2008, I, I did a, I found out about the Boulder Outdoor Survival School, which is where I currently work, uh, and did a 14-day course, and uh, absolutely fell in love with with this place, um, with the with the land, uh, with the skills that were being taught, and uh, and how they were being taught as well. Everything at Boss is very is is very uh, sort of intentional in the way that it's te that it it teaches people certain things. It's a um, boss itself, you know, uh, on a on a very basic level is a it's a primitive skill school. It's a school that runs courses teaching uh, s skills such as friction fire and um, and shelter and traps and. Um, wilderness navigation, things along those lines. So at a basic level, that's what that's what BOSS is. They, we have courses ranging from seven to 28 days long. On a, another level, BOSS is a, um, it's a way for people to disconnect from a, a pretty crazy world that we're existing in now and reconnect to the natural world and, and themselves. It's a growing tribe of people that every single year people come out and do courses and they're now a part of the boss family and a part of the boss tribe and so it it, it allows for it allow it's allow it's this incredible space that allows for people to to come here to push themselves to grow to get better at wilderness and primitive survival skills um, and to learn about uh, this amazing place as well as themselves so um, you know on a most basic level it's, it's about the skills on another level. I think that people get a lot more out of these courses than uh, just learning how to uh, build a friction fire, or just learning how to make a poncho shelter or something along those lines, or just being able to use uh, their blanket to, to uh, carry all their equipment in. So there's a, a, a lot of levels to what we're, what we're doing here and not a lot has changed. You know, Boss originally started in 1968. Uh, it was originally a BYU program. And we've been operating in this area uh, the Bold of Boulder, Utah, uh, coming up on about 50 years. So um, it's been around for a long time, and it's a system that uh, that's really had a really powerful and positive effect on on people um, in that time. We've had some amazing instructors as well work here. Um, you know, Larry Dean Olson, um, Dave Westcott r ran the company for a while, uh, and during that time, we've had people like Matt Graham and Cody Lundeen and um, and David Holliday. So these sort of like legends in the industry, a lot of people maybe didn't necessarily start their career here, but at some point have passed through. And so there's a lot of wisdom and knowledge uh, that's been passed down from generation to generation. And now we're kind of seeing a new generation of boss instructors and people sort of working their way up the ranks and spending a lot of time uh, practicing and learning these skills and feel passionate about um, about our mission to to make a positive impact on the world.
Yeah, so this is our uh, the boss store here. When the students come in, we do an orientation and uh, a lot of the equipment that we bring on courses, uh, they'll either get from here or, you know, honestly, a lot of stuff here people are able to find at their local thrift store. Uh, one of the main philosophies that is uh, sort of uh, has threaded through the generations uh, is the more you know, the less you need. And also, um, if I can use one particular item in my kit for one thing, what else can I possibly use it for? So, you know, we have like our wool blankets as an example. Our wool blankets uh, we use to not only um, keep us warm at nighttime, but we also use them to make our backpacks out of. So we'll make sort of survival blanket packs with that. Uh, we have ponchos. We'll use those not only to um, not only to cover ourselves if it's raining and as a as a rain layer, but also to make our shelters with. Uh, uh, tip tip we use mostly wool materials uh, just because wool is a great natural material and it insulates also when it's wet. Um, and then we have a couple of uh, crafters here uh, as instructors at Boss as well. So do a little shameless plug here. These are. Uh, Sasha knives, these are fantastic bushcraft knives uh, made by an instructor, Jeremy Thomas. Um, and they're just, you know, perfect for what it is that we do out here. Uh, the ability to carve and chop and billet um, and plane, things that are gonna be necessary in order for people to be able to comfortably exist uh, in this environment. So, um, we also got like a couple of books and uh, bandanas, another sort of like thing that is great to have in in any good kit. Yeah, so uh, we Boss doesn't currently, but we used to run uh, winter courses uh, up on Boulder Mountain. Boulder Mountain's elevation uh, tops out at about 10,500 feet. And so we definitely get a lot of snow uh, and pretty frigid temperatures up there. So, and um, so it's really nice to, to be up there in the winter time. So we got a, a course, uh, uh, probably not too long ago, maybe 20 years ago or so, uh, that we used to run on the mountain. Here we have uh, Jill Holiday uh, up at uh, one of our base camps, our Durfee, Durfee camp, we call it. Uh, her demonstrating the, the pump drill uh, in, in order to make jewelry, or uh, you can also use it to do friction fire with. Uh, but she's, she's rocking, um, yeah, Dave Holiday's, one of Dave Holiday's most famous uh, dandelion. Uh, sure. Shirts, which is just fantastic. Um, yeah, another winter course. And then we have John Olson um, here who is doing a little bit of flint napping, a little bit younger back in the day. And then um, behind us as well, we have uh, just, this is just uh, a natural arch along the Escalante River. And this is one of the main areas we, we run our courses in. Beautiful pictures. So Jeremy also makes, um, along with the Sasha Nice, he also makes uh, Hirachi sandals. Um, and, you know, in terms of this environment and what we're doing out here, honestly, sandals are the way to go just because we're dealing with a, uh, a lot of sand. Um, and when you get that sand in your shoe, uh, you're sweating in your shoe a lot. That's when blisters tend to form. And so very rarely will you see a boss instructor uh, wearing big heavy boots. Typically we go with really minimal footwear uh, and that's been kind of consistent throughout the ages. Um, and so these Hirachi sandals are just, you know, they're starting to gain traction now, but uh, they've been something that we've been wearing and utilizing for a long time.